The following program is intended for mature audiences. and goblins and welcome to a special halloween edition of flesh wound after dark i'm daniel shine joined by producer extraordinaire todd lawyer uh, I, I would like to say i'm very ha happy you change your voice back to normal when you say my name because that would have been weird <laughs> Ooh, well we know the next after dark uh, i will not be doing that now uh, <laughs> Jesus, well. yeah I don't know. Just trying to, you know, set the mood with some of that uh, uh, AMSR. Is that what they call it? Which I still don't know what that is. Yeah, good question. I don't know what it is. I, everybody's like, I, I hear about a ASMR. Might be saying it wrong there. But uh, yeah, it's like just people like, or women, I don't know, just saying shit up close into a microphone. I don't quite know what it does. And and. It it's anonymous sensory meridian response. It's a relaxing, often often seductive, often seductive sensation that begins in the scalp and moves down the body, also known as a brain massage. Okay, I know what it is. I didn't know it had a name. So, sounds like uh, something that uh, cam girls use to get money out of really stupid dudes. That's what I'm going to No, it, it, it's that's like the actual term. I mean, they're using it for whatever now, but that's like an actual thing. Okay. Well, I just didn't know that was the term. In my day, we looked at just plain good old American pornography. God it's not a porn it. thing, though, Dan. It has to be a porn thing. Everything no, no. I've ever heard refers to it as like a porn thing. It, it's not. You know, that's a discussion for another thing. Let's just. All right. I, I'm, I'm going to just assume that I am right for now. You're uh, right, Dan. I am. Thank you, Todd. Uh, so anyways, uh, so we're uh, not doing a first time thing tonight, but first time in a very long time, definitely first time in the video era. And we are talking nudie cuties, uh, which uh, I will say different nudie cuties, perhaps not what you're more familiar with, uh, the uh, nudist camp. Uh, films that that a lot of people tend to associate that with but uh yeah uh so we, we've got some different elements added into our nudie cuties tonight and uh, i thought this would be a fun little halloween show uh so before i get into it uh, just a little bit of history because you might be wondering well what exactly is that uh so the nudie cutie was essentially the early you can't really call it a sex film because there was never any sex. Uh, it all began with uh, the 1957 Roth versus the U.S. Uh, court case ruling, which which kind of paved the way for these films. And uh, I'm not going to go over that too, too much, because to be perfectly honest, uh, what you really want to do, if you really are just interested in the history of sexploitation in, in general, from the nudie cuties to uh, the roughies, which were the films that kind of replaced it. And I'll get into that a little bit. But uh, you will want to check out That's Sexploitation from uh, Severin. This is an amazing documentary from top to bottom. Uh, Frank Hennenlotter uh, is on this. Uh, David Friedman, of course. Uh, the late, great uh, Mike Vrainy, who... Uh, of something weird who is responsible for us having so many of these films if not most of them <laughs> you know he really uh rescued it and i oh mean the documentary on him alone um so yes check this out guys it's amazing and it came out uh, a little while ago but uh, it's been, yeah it's been well, a while yeah, it's one of my favorite docs. Great documentary. It, it is. It's, yes. Yeah, even if you're not into these films, you will enjoy the doc. Uh, so anyways, uh, the Nudie Cutie, at that particular time, we were still at, at an era where actual, certainly in the U.S., any actual, like, sex acts, not, not triple X, but just characters having sex was still very taboo. And uh, 
the nudie cuties were always films that were stacked with nudity, but no actual sexual content, uh, which made the nudist camp films a very easy thing to do because, number one, they got around the rules by qualifying as educational. So, uh, you know, it's like, oh, we are here filming this nudist camp. It was all just basically to see tits and ass, never frontal nudity, but that is how they got around it. Uh, and uh, eventually, as I had said, the Ruffies replaced the nudie cuties uh, and added the elements of violence, murder, particularly sexual, uh, sexualized uh, violence uh, into the mix and made it a little bit harder. Uh, but these films were very mm -hmm. innocent. I mean, they're they're jam packed with nudity, but you said made explicit. it harder. <laughs> uh, well, they did that too. If they were good movies, we'll let you know if uh, that worked tonight. Uh, but yes, there's a a huge history on this. I, I'd like to do maybe more shows on this at some point. But you've also got the white coders, and uh, which were known for kind of introducing the the mm -hmm. educational content, opening it up with where, like a narrator, a doctor, where would introducing you put it. Where would you put Dr. Hump at? What, 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 what's that fall into? Just good old fashioned sexploitation. Yeah, I okay. mean, now that, that one's a little complicated because uh, there was footage shot later. And go back and listen to our curious Dr. Hump review. I yeah, love that's why I brought it yeah. up. Because there's like, a, a, oh, what? The, uh, there's a Russ, early Russ Meyer ones that kind of like falls in between two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Russ Meyer, uh, I mean, he was. Yeah, we'll, was, we'll be doing shows yeah. on him. We've been saying that for years, so maybe it's time to dive into those. Yeah, Russ Meyer, H.G. Lewis as well. Wasn't just yeah, known yeah. for the gore. Doris Wishman, uh, well, Roberta Finley and Michael mm -hmm. Finley. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that's essentially what you have here. Uh, but they, they also, uh, we have some films that tried to capitalize on other crazes at the time. And... Uh, do something a little bit different with uh, the nudie cutie formula. So uh, with that being said, we'll get into our first film, which is from 1964. And director uh, Peter Perry, who I will talk about more uh, here in, in a little bit and some of his uh, pseudonyms. Uh, but <clears throat> all right. So uh, Kiss Me Quick. Uh Yes, it's Monsters of Go Go as your favorite ghouls go gaga over the nudiest nudes in this nutty feature. Uh, Sterilox, a not too bright alien from the buttless galaxy, visits the castle of mad Dr. Breedlove in search of the perfect female specimen. Faster than you can say, kiss me quick, he's introduced to Breedlove's lingerie clad creations that happily bump and grind in the dungeon exercise room, including such chemi chemically engineered gyrating go go goddesses as Kiss Me, Boobra, Miss Gigi String, and more. Uh, all right, so I, I certainly sold the. Well, they certainly sold the uh, fuck out of this film. But, but, uh, but, but the, the thing of note is <laughs> we have a character, or or is it the performer named Fatty Belt Buckle? I fucking <laughs> lost my shit when I heard that. <laughs> I was like, yes, that is amazing. Uh, so that alone gave it a five, right? You know that. <laughs> this, some people consider the best nudie cutie ever made. And because to be perfectly honest, for a lot of you, you'll look at some of these and think, well, there's just not a whole lot to them. Because there's not. Uh, like I said, it was just a very uh, a sneaky way to get around the censors of the time and just show tits and ass. Again, nothing really exploitive. Uh, but this this introduces uh, a lot of comedy and it takes uh, takes advantage of kind of the monster craze at the time because we get uh, a lot of we get cameos from frankenstein's monster who uh the doctor points out uh, was a she she was originally fanny stein and because <laughs> of a mixed up is now frankenstein so we get uh, kind of a uh a transitioning joke there which was <laughs> unusual for the time but uh nonetheless funny and uh this whole thing is just so goofy. Dr. Breedlove is is kind of mimicking uh, 
I don't know what in particular, but Bella Lugosi, a lot of the the horror uh, icons of the time in a very just goofy way. Uh, Sterilox uh, from Planet Drupiter, by the way, uh, is just like the Three Stooges in a in a fucking uh, uh, softcore film. <laughs> uh, I like this one a lot. It's not going to be for everybody, but this one, as far as if you're going to sit down with a group of friends, you're probably not going to watch some of the nudist camp films, but you can certainly put on Kiss Me Quick and have a great, great time. Um, the the From the Catacomb 69 dungeon exercise room to the uh, uh, trans Frankenstein. Uh, <laughs> the, the movie originally started as a parody of Dr. Strangelove, uh, and it uh, uh, later was changed to capitalize on the Dean Martin, Kim Novak flick, uh, Kiss Me Stupid, which came out as the same year. In fact, it was originally shot as Dr. Breed Love. So they they just, they changed their minds on what they wanted to capitalize on, essentially. <laughs> um, so a little bit of background on this film, uh, the cinematographer... Uh, Laszlo Kobachs went on to one hell of a career. He shot uh, Easy Rider, Ghostbusters. He worked on uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind uh, and was really uh, uh, quite the legend. Uh, very, very well respected. Um, he, uh, as Hollywood was changing at that time, uh, he was just at the forefront. So certainly a name that I wanted to uh, throw out there. And um, uh, so, again, this this sets aside that nudist colony faux documentary frolicking uh, flicks for this theme. Uh, and I think it works quite well. I As of now, and I, I feel like I've seen a good bit, if not all, I, I will say this is my favorite nudie cutie. And, uh, man, uh, maybe it's the talent behind it because American New Wave Cinema owes a huge debt to Laszlo. Um, the director, Peter Perry, is also very prolific in the sexploitation field because uh, he is also known under his other pseudonym, Beth Bethel Buckaloo. And uh, it made many a something a weird titles. Uh, he was known for Hicksploitation, uh, and he did films like uh, The Midnight Plowboy, Country Cousins, which is fucking hilarious, The Pig Keeper's Daughter, Sassy Sue, uh, Tobacco Rudy. Uh, these films I like a lot, so expect a show down the line on these. Uh, he also did The Dirty Mind of Young Sally, which is another something weird favorite. Um, and uh, it, this guy was just so prolific. Uh, I think he also went under A. Stutzberry and uh, Seymour Tokus and all these <laughs> crazy, crazy named Tokus. Um, he did The Joys of Jezebel, The uh, Secret Sex Lives of Romeo and Juliet, also ranking am among my favorites. Uh, this film is really notable, however, for being the first film produced by Exploitation icon harry novak uh who uh used the also used the seymour took his name i believe as as the producer this was the one that started it all and i i could go the whole show running down what he did uh harry novak is a grindhouse exploitation icon uh but having said that uh obviously you can tell that i like these films again who do I recommend them to? Always That's the issue. Tricky. <laughs> yeah, that is tricky. I will say, Kiss Me Quick, I think, is the one to watch if you're just getting into this. And then the nudist camp stuff, I, I feel like that's very, very niche. Uh, but, Todd, how about you, though? Uh, what what did you think of, of Kiss Me Quick? Because I thought the humor was pretty funny. The conveyor belt gag at the end and uh, the mommy as well. Uh, uh, I thought was pretty funny. They, they 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 try. This has got a more clever script and you know cornball humor, but it still worked for me. How about you? 
Yeah, it does for me. And I agree with you about, you know, this also kind of falls in. It's probably my favorite nudie cutie. I mean, I could save Russ Meyer stuff, but that's just because I love Russ Meyer. But like overall, this, especially for like a fan of horror, I think you get a good mix. But if you're a fan of horror alone, I don't think it's going to help. You have to like these. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's for the right person. These are very niche things. There's no but, frights here. For sure. Yeah. There's... <laughs> but if you're curious, this is a good one to like, okay, I'll check it out. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's also, I mean, probably offensive in its own way because uh, the women have no dialogue. In fact, the only thing they say is, kiss me quick. That's it. Uh, there you go. There's all the female dialogue in the film. Uh, so, you know, different time. No strong female characters in uh, Kiss Me Quick. But uh, uh, I still think there's something very charming about it. And you get your nudity. I mean, again, it's topless and TNA. Uh, but you do get that. So for some people that maybe want a sexy film, but not... Uh, again, like I said, it changed. Uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> as we we know uh not not too long after this we started getting into the really rough nasty stuff and uh i think these films are a a specific period in time we will never have them again i don't see anybody going out and making any kind of a traditional nudie cutie so uh they are completely within their time and I do enjoy them. Having said that, again, very, very niche. Um, I'm, I'm almost at a point where I don't quite know how to rate them. But I'm yeah. only rating them within the nudie cutie genre. So I always remind people when I do this, I'm not comparing Kiss Me Quick to maybe a horror film I really liked and I give uh, three or three and a half stars. Now, I'm not saying this is better than that film. This is just, again, within its, its field. Uh, so having said that, I mean, it is my favorite nudie cutie and I think it's the most entertaining one, the most accessible one. And I think it's a five star film, uh, within its genre. Uh, what say you, Todd? Um, even with, you know, this probably being the favorite one I saw, I, I still can't even say for me, it's a five. Um, cause mm. I don't think there, I don't think I've seen my five star nudie cutie yet. I don't know I if get it's that. even out yeah. there. So I'm a four. Um, of, of what I've seen, this is definitely my uh, probably it's probably the best one. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see, I'm gonna say I don't know if you'll ever get that five <laughs> to be honest, but we'll I kind of know that too. But I, that's why I'm being realistic. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what was also really ballsy about this film because people forget uh, Universal owned the Frankenstein Frankenstein's monster character. The uh, look. The look of it, yes, but they owned it outright, and that was Frank. But, that was Frankenstein's monster. But no, no, only the look of it. You could do Frankenstein's monster as long as it didn't have that the look. And this one has the look. I think at this particular point, and I you can correct me on this, but I think at this particular point they still had complete control over it, even the character. Because uh, remember, this sure is that 60, point it was public domain sixty four. So I don't know. I'm not 100% on that. But uh, I know Harry Novak had, was known for just saying he just said, yeah, fuck it. He didn't worry about it. He just did it anyways. Um, and fortunately, he didn't have any issues. Uh, he used to he actually started with RKO. So, uh, hey, uh, cool for being ballsy. And I, I think this is a good one to watch because, again, at this period, the monsters and the Adams family uh, were such a big thing. I mean, you were in that famous monsters of film land era uh so uh this was a huge success and really launched harry novak and uh you guys should uh, all check it out uh so our next film and i feel like uh our, our the films we have coming up we may not talk about is in depth but nonetheless uh our next one is the house on bear mountain from director arlie frost and uh in this one Granny Good and all the sexy girls in the house on Bear Mountain are throwing their annual Halloween ball, and you're invited. 
Frankenstein will do the twist with Miss Hollywood, and Dracula will spike the punch, but beware. The feds are planning to bust the place, and Krakow, Granny's seven-foot-tall pet werewolf in makeup, is looking <laughs> for a date. Monsters never had it this good. Uh, all right, so uh, this is uh, the... Uh, part of the double feature with kiss me quick on the something weird dvd and uh so just to just to show you there there are some big names that also uh enjoy these films because of all people nicholas windig reffin uh restored this particular film in 2017 and <laughs> i think so i don't know we might get a blu-ray at some point on house on bear mountain well i i could see you know uh, Picaram, or well, no, we'll do the vinegar syndrome deal with uh, something weird, or Af yeah, Agfa. Or yeah, yeah. I, I, I can certainly see that. Uh, so in, in this one, uh, certain uh, uh, Bob Cressy, uh, you should know that, uh, you should probably know that name from uh, some of the rougher stuff. He was uh, the commandant in Love Camp 7 and uh, yeah, one of the early ones. Uh, so he he certainly didn't just stick with nudie cuties. And he's kind of doing uh, a riff on the 1950s uh, uh, comic, Jonathan Winter's character, Maud Frickert, uh, which... I know probably nobody knows that. Uh, <laughs> even Todd's not old enough to remember any of that. But uh, basically, yeah, dude in drag doing a granny gimmick. And, oh, wait, you know what I do? The Jonathan Winters one. Yeah, I do kind of remember that. Yeah, Jonathan Winters, Maud Frickard. I think it wasn't that there's something with. Was that a Carol? No. Scooby-Doo? Didn't they do something? Didn't he do that? You know what? He might have done it. Yes, you know what? Now that you say it, he yeah. did. But he fit 50s comic and part of his act. Um, That's and, when drag was funny. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, we, so I'll tell you later. <laughs> well, drag. Hey, drag shows are still popular. I mean, my my cousin and mother are at a drag show tonight. <laughs> God damn! What the? That's uh. <laughs> what are the odds? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. But yes, anyways, House on Bear Mountain. Uh, yeah, I think I mentioned Bob Cressy, Love Camp 7, played the Commandant. Uh, you get to see a lighter side of him in, in this one. And uh, so this, unlike Kiss Me Quick, this one, uh, it does have the monster element. It's not uh, as frequent, uh, but it is there. Uh, the comedy, very, very goofy of its era. This is 1962, if I didn't say that already. Um, but I, I prefer Kiss Me Quick, but I think this one still has a lot of charm. And uh, ironically, a lot more nudity. Uh, it, it's pretty much uh, constant in this one. We get some narration and, and Benny Hill type comedy gags from from granny good in this one but uh for the most part this is just a whole lot of nakedness yeah. uh and uh 1960s uh dance numbers uh the party it looks like they just rented out a, a room somewhere more or less uh one notable thing about this particular film is harry thomas uh did the makeup and Harry Thomas uh, was very prolific in his field. He did uh, films, uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space, Little Shop of Horrors, Frankenstein's Daughter, uh, Night of the Blood Beast. Uh, and uh, yeah, so he, he did actually work on this and uh, obviously went on to better things. Uh, I have a fun time with this one. I don't know. The girls look great. Uh, very vintage, but hey it worked for me and uh yeah so uh todd what did you think of this one um it's for me it's definitely a step down from the last one i like a little bit more i don't want to say a little bit more plot but i kind of do this one it was cool it was worth like a one-timer for me um but yeah the the highlight of this double disc is uh, kiss me quick for sure it, it absolutely is and um but 
I did enjoy it. I thought the whole thing about the werewolf uh, have having a union rep and all that I, I thought was kind of funny. Uh, very cheeseball type stuff, but what can I say? I, I do really like this. I'm a weirdo, so I, oh, I don't yeah. I don't want to steer anybody wrong with these, but uh, yeah. And uh, if you really want to see, arguably the first like nudie cutie was. Uh, the immoral Mr. T's, uh, which was among one of the earlier ones. It, it, it actually wasn't the very first. It's but, it's cited as yeah. it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but that's the one that uh, the one I'm talking about is the Russ Meyer one where he it's sl a slightly retooled name, but mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's hopefully throwing out some names for you guys. Uh, Something weird in general is a good company to to look to. Um, some of the old, because there's so many offshoot labels, but Seduction Cinema, Retro Seduction Cinema uh, had some uh, that I think are probably still ones that you can get. Uh, ironically enough, and RIP, but uh, Fries, I remember, used to get in some of those uh, nudie cutie uh, DVDs. Uh, so... All right, so going on to our next one, uh, which is from 1965, and director Barry Mahone. And uh, he is actually historically significant, not in film, but just historically significant. Uh, and I, I'll get into that. But uh, it is The Beast That Killed Women, not Todd. Uh, <laughs> this is predated Todd. Uh, and this is... Uh, so poor... Dolores Carlos, uh, unable to get even a tan, she and Hi she and hubby Byron Mab scurry off to a Miami nudist camp at precisely the same moment the camp is invaded by the beast that killed women. Uh, a goofy-looking gorilla with an appetite for the ladies. Murder and panic quickly spread through the camp. She said he was big and hairy. Worse, the hardened police even march right through a game of nude volleyball with a corpse on a stretcher. Uh, and they do not react to it at all. Uh, finally, <laughs> after Miss Carlos is chased by the big monkey, a pretty policewoman volunteers to enter the camp as ape bait. Uh, that probably gave away a lot. But truthfully, there's not a lot to give away. Uh, because this is uh, also interjecting horror. But man, this is just a dude in an ape suit shows up a few times. Uh, the rest of this is very much, I mean, this is very, very thin on plot. Um, it is, uh, in the credits, uh, we have Miami Beach's most lovely nudists. So uh, not a whole lot of legit actors in this one. Uh, and uh, yeah, very authentic. Like I said, it just, you, you've got a dude in an ape suit. Uh, but there is some charm here, but first off, I want to talk about uh, Barry Mahone, uh, who's a World War II hero, uh, and he is known for being the manager and personal pilot for Errol Flynn. Uh, he also uh, uh, produced uh, for Flynn and was really close to him. Uh, this guy's had a, had a fascinating life. Uh, in fact, the Steve McQueen role in Great Escape was loosely based on his uh, experiences in the war uh so barry mahone was a fucking badass and uh, an american hero Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah yeah that uh like i say go watch great escape that's barry mahone the guy that did this uh schlocky uh sexploitation uh monster ape movie uh, <laughs> which i just think is so funny uh so there's not a whole lot to talk about this one uh, there are some really funny, ridiculous moments, but it, other than that, it's wooden amateur acting uh, and wall-to-wall -wall nudity. Uh, again, uh, no very in innocent kind of stuff. It, it's matter-of-fact nudity. It's just nudists walking around doing their thing. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't have a whole lot else to say about it. Uh <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about the beast that killed women? Um, I <laughs> this one, these two are all you remember, Dan. Oh, oh shit. Okay, my <laughs> that's dad. all right. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, you're mad though that he stole your gimmick. I am. 
just <laughs> yeah so uh all right so the second one on there is uh the monster of camp sunshine uh which is a 1964 film from writer director frank larogat Hopefully I'm saying that name right. Uh, and in this one, Hugo, the tubby gardener of a New York nature camp, turns into the monster of Camp Sunshine when he unwittingly drinks from a stream contaminated with the mysterious chemical that releases the killer instincts in rats. Wielding an axe and wearing a haircut that makes him look like a mutant Mo Howard, the crazed Hugo finally attacks a bunch of birthday-celebrating sun worshippers until the military shows up and blasts the bejesus out of him. Spoiler alert. Um, okay, so this one is in actually in black and white. Um, and, ooh, there, there's a lot of uh, filler in this. Uh, we have uh, two nurses that are a room, or a nurse and a, a model that are roommates. Um, Claire and Marta is a lot of just dialogue that quite frankly, if you're bored, you can fast forward through. Um, it's one of those. <laughs> it's one of those, but uh, even this one has some charm. Uh, the, the early sixties, New York city footage alone makes this one worth a watch. Just, uh, you know, a city that, that no longer exists that yeah. the same way as it was then. Uh, and I always, yeah, get excited for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just a huge, uh, yeah, I'm the same LA and New York old school back when they were nice and sleazy. Although yeah. LA is still pretty sleazy, but it doesn't look like it used to. <laughs> I don't know. New York's New York's feeling a little dangerous again in some ways. Uh -huh. Not Good the for same, them. not the same way. We're making progress, we're making progress. Uh, but I, I think unfortunately, a lot of the uh, the old porn theaters and, and grind houses they they haven't existed for a long time so it's not really the exact same but uh no gotta bring them back i'm gonna i should run for governor and just bring them all back <laughs> God. just gonna make it a rule uh that we have to have one on you know for every every block there's got to be at least two uh but anyways uh so this one this one actually does a little bit more than you would expect, though. Uh, it's probably the lightest in terms of the the TNA. Uh, it, it it does sort of. Uh, I mean, it is a comedy, but it does kind of try and uh, take a stab at the whole mutant monster radiation thing. You could argue, you could almost call it a slash, an early slasher. Uh, if this, if Hugo were successful at all, Hugo's just a, a big uh, boob uh, who does not do a very good job. I say that this one is very much worth watching, though, because of the finale, uh, where we have our our hero parachute from a plane, a bunch of stock World War II footage, in the most hilarious over the top ending in nudie cutie history. Uh, they make it just seem like this dude who just more or less looks like a discount Ben Joseph Park uh, just getting bombed and shot at and just chaos all over the place uh, stock footage <laughs> from Normandy I think if I recall and uh, I thought it was actually really funny is it worth watching again uh, that may depend for a lot of you tonight but uh, I did enjoy it uh, I know I haven't actually rated these two um, but in fact, I actually don't think I officially rated uh, House on Bear Mountain, come to think of it. Uh, that one would get a three and a half, and these two would get a two and a half. Um, so they're average nudie cuties. Yeah, yeah, they might even be above average, but I'm, I'm just going a little more low. Because I, I really think at the end of the day with these films, if you're going to just do one, do Kiss Me Quick. Uh, and see how you feel about it. But yeah, so hopefully if nothing else uh, taught you guys something, educated you in the world of smut tonight, uh, 
thank you for spending your hot party or Halloween with us tonight, which I think is awesome. Uh, hopefully the, the kiddies enjoyed flesh wound juniors and you're enjoying this. Uh, or if you're watching it without uh, your parents permission, shame on you. We do not advocate that at flesh wound. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Uh, short and sweet. Check out these films guys. Uh, like I said, Agfa, Seems to be putting out a good deal of something weirds catalog. It's a big catalog, so who knows? Uh, I could see some of these potentially hitting hitting Blu-ray. Uh, I know when we did Curious Doctor Hump, it like immediately came out. So I'm just taking complete credit for how much I've sucked that film off over the years. <laughs> well, let's see if we get a. <laughs> <laughs> it happened again. <laughs> Absolutely. So, guys, patreon.com slash flesh wound features all starts at a buck, and you get a lot of uncensored content. Uh, uh, who knows? Maybe some more something weird or AGFA type content on there at, 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 a, at a certain point, because uh, there's a lot of this I would like to do. And uh, thanks for listening. Fleshwoundfeatures.com. Holidays are coming up. Grab yourself uh, a t shirt from our Teesprings store. Links uh, are there. Uh, join the Discord, Horror Cartel, Fleshwind Radio Facebook group, Fleshwind Radio on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us separately as well. And uh, sound off in the comments, guys. Let us know, like, were there any any nudie cuties that stood out for you? Uh, we might do more. I know these are tricky to review, but maybe we'll, we'll throw in one of the nudist camp uh, flicks at some point. So that's all I've got. Check your candy and uh, all that good stuff or, or don't if you don't like your kids oh no check your kids come on uh yeah <laughs> check it check it check it absolutely check it make sure and, yeah. all right on that note let's get the hell out of here good night happy uh -huh. halloween <laughs>